Today on Watches Wednesday, we are going to do a stock that was requested by Monsieur Blaine. So as always, thank you very much for the suggestion. And if any of you have any other stocks out there that you'd like for me to review or take a look at, please leave that in the comment section down below. Now, the stock we're going to be taking a look at today is Jumia Technologies, which is actually a company that I was not familiar with until Monsieur Blaine requested this from me. So it's very new on my radar, but it's a company I'm very excited about. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. <music> Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me today. My name is Matt, and before we get started here, I just need to say, not advice, don't take it as advice. You need advice, speak to a financial advisor. They'll be able to help, but this is just for your entertainment purposes only. Also, remember, if you like this video, it's a five cent donation for charity. If you subscribe, it's a 10 cent donation for charity. Now, I don't wanna be calling anybody out specifically here, but apparently only 6% of you that watch my videos are subscribed. So the remaining amount left, if you subscribe, just know that you are donating to charity. So keep that in mind as well. Now, if you're not familiar with Jumia, think of like a Mercado Libre tied with like a DoorDash and also with a PayPal component to it is the best way that I can describe it. It is an e-commerce marketplace that focuses on African countries, but has created their own payment system called Jumia Pay, as well as a food delivery service similar to what we see with DoorDash or Uber Eats. This company has been around since 2012, and it was actually founded by two former McKinsey employees and has their headquarters located in Germany. Now, as always, when it comes to these companies, I like to start off by taking a look here at their numbers. And for this week, I actually do have a comparison for us to take a look at. We'll be comparing Jumia to Mercado Libre and Amazon. Given that they both have a very similar business structure, business model, I thought that this would be a good time to do a comparison. And it can also maybe give us an idea for some numbers to look forward to or maybe set some expectations expectations for Jumia in the future when we look at their competitors, Mercado Libre or Amazon, who've been around for much longer than Jumia. So we'll start here with the market cap. Just something I wanted to bring up and point out is if you look here, look how much smaller Jumia is than its two competitors, Mercado Libre and Amazon. And I'll apologize here for saying competitors. I don't see them as direct competitors given how they operate in different markets but their businesses are the same, so I apologize for using the word competitors. It is interesting to see though Jimmy with a market cap of 3.5 billion compared to Amazon sitting at 1.54 trillion. Now obviously Amazon is a huge powerhouse. I don't know if we'll be able to experience Jimmy getting to that size of a company, but it does set a pretty high bar for future expectations. Now, as we could see here though, Jumia is trading at a very steep premium. 16.74 times sales is a very expensive stock. Now, not as expensive as Mercado Libre at 17.88, but I like to use Amazon here as the comparison because Amazon is still considered an expensive or overvalued stock. But having a price to sales less than four, yes, it's still high, but looking at its competition makes it look like it's actually a very attractive investment. Now, these price to sales could be a little worrying because that is very high for what we typically see with a price to sales ratio. Also, the revenue growth year over year is something that had me a little concerned with Jumia, given that it's negative. Now, I'm aware that this is a rapidly growing company and has had to come up and has had to overcome many hurdles with their expansion. Nonetheless, though, having a negative revenue growth is not something that I always like to see with some investments in my account. We have negative 12.96% for Jumia compared to 37.62% for Amazon and 73.04% for Mercado Libre. What does give me some good hope, so when it comes to Jumia as an investment is the analyst estimates for the revenue growth in the future. Now, obviously we can see with Amazon and Mercado Libre, they're still projected to grow their revenue, but just not as fast as what they've done over the past few years where when we look at Jumia, they actually have an opportunity to actually produce some positive revenue growth and then some, which is something encouraging for me to see and shows that analysts at least have some positive future outlooks when it comes to Jumia as a company and a business. Another thing though that is really helpful for Jumia when it comes to it at being an investment is their quick ratio. Given they're the only one that has a quick ratio over one, let alone two, is something that I do like to see for this company because I absolutely believe that having cash on hand is going to really help this company be able to grow comfortably and not have to stretch themselves so thin or put themselves in a bad position financially. I was a little surprised to see both Mercado Libre and Amazon have a quick ratio less than one, but I guess given how big those companies are relative to Jumia, it makes a lot of sense for having that lower quick ratio. Now, one other financial measurement that I always like to look at, as many of you know, is the discount and cash flow analysis, and I use Simply Wall Street for that. 
Now, they actually have Jumia trading around 80% below its fair value. Now, again, that's not a guarantee that it's going to grow to that $200 plus a share as they show here, but it is something encouraging knowing that this could be potentially a very undervalued investment. And I tend to put a little bit more emphasis on things like a discounted cash flow than I do other metrics like a price to sales or price to earnings ratio. Now, with these numbers, there are some statistics here that I like to see and could be encouraging. There's there's others that are a little intimidating and might steer you away from this investment. So as I always say, these valuations only really paint one side of the picture. So I like to take it a step further and see what opportunities does Jumia have to be a successful company. And the first, probably comes as no surprise, is their fintech component of Jumia, which is Jumia Pay. With many of the citizens in the African countries that Jumia works with not having bank accounts, creating something like Jumia Pay was absolutely essential for them to be able to create this e-commerce platform. And Jumia Pay is really just a mobile wallet like what we see with like Cash App or Venmo, and it allows for people to essentially establish a bank account. Now, Jumia Pay also has a very unique offering when it comes to their e-commerce store, where if you want to pay for something on delivery, if you don't have a bank account or a credit card to use or the Jumia Pay system, then you can actually pay cash when the product is delivered to you I don't know if there's like a service fee behind it I would imagine there is because there's an immense amount of risk when you take that path but I thought that was a unique option and a great way for people to not have to be left out from buying products through Jumia just because you don't have a bank account Again, that being said, I really think this Jumia Pay is gonna be a great addition to the company. And it's something that they're actually keeping as more of like a sub-business to Jumia. So it's not on the same app. You have to download a separate app for the service. But I actually like that because it gives them the ability to spin this off in the future should they need to, to either raise money or keep it separate from what their other businesses operations are. So I like the direction they're heading in by keeping this a subcategory but not directly tied to their main platform i don't know if that made sense but the best example i have is why you need to have an uber for your rides and then uber eats app for your food delivery you know it's all uber but those take place on two separate apps and this also slightly reminds me of ebay now i was very young when the whole ebay craze was going on so i don't fully remember but from what i recall from the stories is that people were very hesitant with buying products online because they didn't feel like the security was there yet and that's why eBay ultimately ended up acquiring PayPal and they put a huge emphasis on the security that PayPal has. And I think this is something that we're now seeing with Jumia and Jumia Pay because it's a way of educating the market to say, you know, you can feel comfortable with these online payments. It'll also allow for people to pay things like bills, whether that be utilities or credit cards or have uh, subscription accounts like a Netflix account tied to it. So I think this is a huge opportunity for them. Another thing that I like about Jumia is that their co-founders are former McKinsey employees, something I touched on earlier. And if you're not familiar with McKinsey, McKinsey is one of the largest consulting groups maybe in the world, I know at least in the US, and it gives businesses advice or structure if they need to kind of redo the organization. When I was at my previous company, they actually were using McKinsey to completely reorganize the business, and it was a very expensive process as well as very time consuming. But that said, as a McKinsey employee, you've obviously seen some very large companies operations and what it takes them to be successful. So I think that having that experience at McKinsey ultimately gives them a better insight for what it would take to succeed in this completely new territory for an e-commerce space and do it better than what anybody else can do. But of course that does bring up the other concern that I have and that is what about the people on the sidelines? And what I mean by that is I would not be surprised if there's some other kind of investor or CEO or billionaire, millionaire, whatever, that is watching what they're doing with Jumia and then just waiting for them to get that whole infrastructure set up and then they'll just come in and we'll probably start taking away market share from Jumia. I do think that is a real threat to this business and it's something worth observing. But I think also the advantage or leg up that Jumia has on that end would be their logistics. Obviously, they're able to sell their logistics to other businesses to help them 
kind of navigate Africa if you don't already have an existing presence there. So I think that it's one of those, you know, chicken or the egg. Is somebody going to beat them to the punch once they already set up the infrastructure? Or is Jumia going to be able to capitalize on the information that they have and sell that to other businesses looking to expand their operations to this territory? When it comes to this company, they're obviously facing a huge risk. And if you've ever watched Shark Tank, you've heard them say before how they don't want to be in the business of educating consumers. And that is what Jumia is having to do is educate people on their platform. That is a very time intensive process but that being said I'm not always a believer that risk has to equal reward I don't think that it's just a perfect seesaw and those balance each other out but in this situation I actually do believe that's a pretty fair balance between risk and reward where they are taking such a high level of risk that if this pays off for them in the future the reward will be absolutely incredible for this company and we can easily make the comparison, like I did earlier, to Amazon and Mercado Libre because of how similar all of these businesses are. You could even throw Alibaba in that mix if you really wanted to. The thing is, Jumia has a long, long road ahead of them. And if they could pull this off, that is great. So when it comes to buying this stock, I really think this is a true example of my theory of just buying in thirds. Because if we can get in now and are able to reap the benefits of this stock really climbing up in share price, then we can make a lot of money on this opportunity. But if some news comes out, if the business doesn't work, or if there's any flaws in the system, then at least we didn't invest everything we had into this one position. And that's actually what I did for this week. So the stock was trading around 30 something dollars a share. So I bought 100 shares of it, giving us a market value of around $3,000. But I like having that little bit of exposure, again, about a third of what I would actually put into it, because I want to make sure that I'm not missing out on any huge opportunity here. But also, again, if it were to take a little bit of a hit i didn't lose as much as i could have either so that being said as i kind of already hinted at i did add this to the portfolio let me go ahead and get that pulled up and i'll be right back with you so looking at the portfolio here we are already up on jumia's position so monsieur blaine thank you very much for this suggestion because it looks like it's going to do pretty well for us so far it's up around 404 dollars again i bought this yesterday so that's a pretty quick profit it's not something i'm expecting is going to be sustainable but if it continues to grow then i'm definitely going to double down on my position square is making i believe a little bit of a recovery from when we last took a look at it it was you know in the negative hundreds of a loss for us so that's not that great but hey we're at negative 62 dollars so that one could make a rebound as well same thing for tesla obviously tesla is the one that's kind of dragging down our portfolio but that's why i have the limit order in because if it keeps going down then we can buy additional shares of it if it goes up though no harm no foul we'll be making money again which is all that matters at the end of the day if i'm right but that said, I'm going to wrap up here. So that was my thoughts on Jumia. Let me know your thoughts about this company below. Again, it is a little bit risky of an investment here, but one that I feel has such huge opportunity that it might be worth exploring at this point in time while you can. If you have any other stocks or companies or anything you'd like for me to take a look at, any questions on investing, please leave that in the comment section down below and I'll happily address them as soon as I can. Thank you again for the suggestion, Monsieur Blame. But with all that said, I'm done here. So, oh yeah, like the video. Remember that 94% or whatever it is that haven't subscribed already, just consider doing so. It's a donation for charity, makes me happy to see, and it helps out my channel a lot. So I'd really appreciate that. All right, done here. Thank you so much for taking the time of your day to watch us. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're right here with me, and I really appreciate that. But I'll let you go ahead, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.